What do you do at the end of a really hard day so that you can regroup for the future? Bower up, baby, let's do this. I loved the show 24. If you never saw it, it was about this counter-terrorist agent named Jack Bauer as he fought terrorist threats on American soil. And every season was one day of his life that played out in real time. So an hour on the show was an hour in his day. So in between seasons, you might have several months or several years that pass where he has more normal days. But every season is when Jack Bauer's day just goes to hell because terrorists are trying to kill Americans, right? I love this show. Uh, for at least five seasons, there was nothing more addictive, more intense. I had a girlfriend who described it to her friends as a soap opera for guys because there was a lot of drama and relationship stuff and plot twists and then there were car chases and gunfights and fist fights and explosions. And I don't know how Jack Bauer got through every day because at least once an hour he's in a car chase or a gunfight or a fist fight and that gets tiring, but he kept on going. I wanna to talk today about when everything is terrible how do you deal when you feel just like not going on anymore? When you feel like there's no point? And Jack Bauer is a particularly salient character for this because he experiences loss after loss after loss. Like sometimes he loses to the terrorists and you know, actual threats happen and then he has to deal. But he also loses family, he loses friends, he loses loved ones. And all throughout the season, it's just basically Jack Bauer being miserable. But what's crazy, and this is what I love, this is one of my favorite scenes of all time, is Jack Bauer is a machine. He is an action hero machine who will do whatever it takes to save innocent lives, including make morally questionable choices and do things that you're like, how can you just, you just tortured somebody or you just killed somebody and it doesn't even seem to be affecting you because he's just nonstop, I'm going to stop this threat and I'm gonna save lives. And he almost seems superhuman. There's this incredible moment at the very end of the third season. The first two seasons each ended with plot twist cliffhangers that made you want to come back again. But the third season did something completely different. It showed us a very human side. So to set this up, there's been a bio threat that he spent the entire day trying to prevent. He prevented thousands of innocent lives from being taken, but I think a hundred did die that he couldn't prevent. He had to kill a very dear friend of his Actually, I take it back, he hated Ryan Chappelle. But <laughs> he had to kill an innocent man to keep other people from dying. He was fighting a drug habit, his daughter almost died, and at the very end, spoiler alert, uh, he has to cut off his partner's hand in order to save the day with his partner saying, do it, right? So here is Jack Bauer, superhuman. It's cool, it's expiring, but it's very macho. It's very like, I could do anything because I'm a man and I'm a tough guy. And at the end of the day, we see something that we've never seen from him before at this point in the show. The threat is passed and he does this. Kiefer's so good in this role. Took home a couple of Emmys, totally deserved. Somebody else. Let him sleep. This is Jack. I just got a call from the district. Start interrogating Saunders Courier. We could use your help. So let me get a coffee. Hit Starbucks. Jack. Yeah. Jack, did you copy? I'm on my way. clock. 
if you watch that show, just hearing that clock probably just brought up like a Pavlovian response for you. Um, <clears throat> until then, we'd never seen anything like this from this character. As I said, he always seems superhuman. And some people frame this as this is where Jack Bauer has a nervous breakdown, but I don't see it that way. I see it as him finally letting himself feel because the threat has passed. I've had moments in my life. I had a time where I had to talk somebody out of taking their own life. They were at a bridge, right? And I had to talk them out of that. Uh, I had a time where somebody was going to kill his wife with a knife and I talked him into giving me the knife. Like, I've had moments in my life and the most amazing thing happens is in those moments, I was completely calm. I was completely calm and cool and collected and focused on what needed to happen. And literally the moment that the threat was passed, the moment that I was by himself, or the moment that I was by myself, like the shakes, right? The shakes and the tears and the holy crap that just happened and it all just kind of hits at once. I saw this as just a very human moment reminding us that, okay, this guy's laser focused on doing his job and on saving lives, but it affects him and it affects him deeply. Now, if you're watching this, you're probably not a counter-terrorist agent. I certainly am not. We have terrible days, terrible weeks, terrible months, terrible years even where the stresses and the losses and the hits just pile up and pile up and pile up and the waves just keep hitting us and we wish we could get some relief and instead of getting relief, we just get hit harder. I think 2020 and 2021 were like that for a lot of people. You know, we're now in 2022 and we're keeping our fingers crossed for a brighter future. But what do we do when it just seems like it's gonna be hopeless? What do we do when it just seems like we can't soldier on? The first thing is to stop holding it inside. I love that he goes, he knows to go in his car. And this isn't, I don't read this as he's trying to fight it and keep it back. I read this as Jack knows he's got to let this out. So he goes to a private place and he releases it. This is called catharsis. Catharsis is when you release pent up emotion in a way that's not going to hurt anybody. It's when you release pent up emotion in a way that instead of soothing yourself or calming yourself. You're letting it out. This looks like screaming into a pillow. It's like hitting a punching bag. It's lifting weights. It's going for a run. It's just whatever you need to do to get this out of your system. Catharsis is the number one thing that I would recommend to start with. What do you do for catharsis? What do you do to release emotions without hurting people? I did martial arts for a while and I found that sparring was one of my favorite things ever, which I didn't expect because I thought, ah, I Getting hit's gonna hurt. But honestly, when you're gloved up and you've got the mouth guard in and you've got the head gear, head gear on, like it hurts a little bit, but really it's just fun. Especially just to wail on each other because so much of what's pent up inside gets released. Now, maybe that's not the answer for you, but we have a son, we have a punching man, like a little stuffed, a stuffed man, and we let our nine-year-old wail on him because it's better that than his siblings and he gets it out of his system. For some people, if they play violent video games, they feel more aggressive. For other people, if they play violent video games, they actually feel more relaxed because they got it out in the game and they don't need to get it out in real life. That's catharsis. You may need relaxation instead. You may need a hot bubble bath with the soothing music. You may need the, the meditation. You may need to be in a quiet space. You need to go on the hike to the mountaintop where it's just all quiet. You may need a distraction. You may need to watch a show or watch a movie or read a book. And as long as those distractions are temporary, momentary, so that you can get your emotions regulated and not avoidance of what you need to face, then that's very, very healthy. In Jack's case, he needed to cry. A good cry is a very good thing. We have a lot of shame built into our culture around crying as if crying is weakness. But crying isn't weakness, it's catharsis, it's a release. Crying is as natural as pooping, folks. It's as natural as using the toilet, right? It's as natural as sneezing. It is a release. It is something that your body needs to do. Don't hold it back. Don't be ashamed of it, let it happen. Now, in Jack's case, he regroups and he gets back in there. And that's what all of us need to do with life even when life is pummeling us. If we hide from things, then throwing up our hands and giving up is gonna feel good for a little bit and then it's not because we've lost our drive, we've lost our why, we've lost who we are. In order to regroup and get back in the game, which is something 24 is definitely about because all this stuff gets to Jack and he tries to get out of the game, he tries to take care of himself, but sooner or later he's always pulled back in because he's got a strong sense of duty. So how can you fulfill your duty to your family, to your job, to your community, to your church, to yourself without burning out? 
first of all, take time for you. Take time for self-care. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is how you can regroup and be there for others. People ask me as a therapist, is it hard for you to leave it at the office? All these terrible stories, all these tremendous burdens, the awful things that you're helping people through. And I say, generally, it's not hard to leave it at the office. And it's not because I don't care. It's because I do care that I leave it there. I go home and I watch a, a TV show that makes me laugh. I go home and I play with my kids. I go to the gym. I eat food that I enjoy. I watch a good, I watch a good movie. I'll do something that is for me because then I'm in a better space the next day to show up and be there for others. If you're living your life completely for others, you're actually not gonna serve them well. If you're living your life completely for others, you're gonna burn out, you're gonna resent them, and you won't be able to fulfill the mission that you had in the first place, which is to lift people and help people. At the end of this, we see in between seasons three and four of 24, Jack retires and he goes into a different career and he goes into something that's better for him and he starts a new love life. And then of course, because it's 24, a terrorist threat happens and he gets sucked in, but it's still key. It's okay to walk away from things where there is no healthy way to do it. It's okay to walk away from things where the cost is too high. It's okay to delegate that responsibility to somebody else, somebody who might be able to approach it with passion or with fresh energy. If you enjoyed this Gets Therapies of Jack Bauer, I wanna direct you to another Fox classic show, The Simpsons, The Simpsons Gets Therapies, where I talk about Homer and Bart's parent-child relationship, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but there's a healthy parenting lesson there to be found. If you are concerned about your mental health right now, if you feel burnt out, we've got a mental health fitness assessment in the description of this video for you to take to see where things are really at and what support you might benefit from. As always, like, subscribe, click the bell, and share with your friends. And let me know in the comments below what television characters or pop culture moments would you like me to react to? How do you deal with a really hard day and feeling stressed and overwhelmed? As always, keep shining. We need your light. I'm Jonathan Decker, and I'll see you next time. Oh, the Simpsons. That's what you're watching next, right? I know there's lots of videos on YouTube, but not better than this. There you go.